You're listening to IRN, the Inception Radio Network, Chicago, Illinois. You're locked into Inception Radio Network, Superior, Wisconsin. Welcome to Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Yes, welcome to the Center of Light Radio. I am that guy. I am Keith Anthony Blanchard. Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement. Strap in all ye spiritual astral knots. As we launch for inner space, I mentioned last week, and I'm going to mention it again because it's just wonderful news. I'm a very blessed man to impart to you, the listening audience today, information information that was given to me by uh, spiritual masters, uh, an experience I had uh, last couple of weeks. That center of light has their full blessing to become a super highway for conscious spiritual evolution. Um. Also, I have some wonderful news that recently came to me. Very soon, I think it's going to be the second week of August, I'm going to have a God-realized man on Center of Light Radio, Swamji Viswa Yogi. Um, he's, an, he's an Indian avatar. So I do strongly suggest uh, the listening for that particular show. I Heads up, I will be announcing it as we get more details surrounding this particular broadcast. Also, if you, were, uh, if you did not have the chance to listen to the interview, the very first interview uh, on Inception Radio, Center of Light Radio, was with uh, Rex Hare about my four-year experience with an alien-human hybrid by the name of Nucleus 8, who is head of security for this quadrant of our galaxy. Listen to that show, an amazing show. This is four years of my life that I was befriended by this particular being, have him doing things to me, uh, through me, in front of me, with me, um, all in waking states of consciousness. Truly, uh, this experience uh, was a blessing in my life. Um, I, I often visit the mothership or his station where he is head of security there. But I bring this up to tell you that um, I was given um, somewhat some consideration from Nucleus 8 to come on the Center of Light Radio and talk to me here publicly. But we're going to do this in hush. We're going to probably uh, pre-record the show. Uh, just for the, the, the fact of security reasons on his part, we don't want anyone uh, targeting him <laughs> out as he, as he has had happen in the past. So, But heads up on those two magical, powerful, uh, expansive shows that will be coming down the pike very, very soon. Uh, make sure you visit the Center of Light Radio website. There you will find those archives that I mentioned of all my past shows. There's lots of really cool things there. Also, you can jump seat from Center of Light Radio uh, website and go to KeithAnthonyBlanchard.com and there you'll find all my books, The The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, my children's book series, Eden Sky Wonders Why, and my newest release about my journey to India to spend time with, it's said by many spiritual teachers and spiritual masters, the highest incarnation, and I use those words in quotes, of God to ever grace this planet, to ever beat his feet on this earth. I was there for two weeks and I brought a tape recorder and I journaled my entire experience. The book is called For the Love of God, A Spiritual Journey. Also, heads up there, you will find 
links to my movie, Do What You Love, A Path to Passionate Living. This movie is about my life. Well, the movie is really about your life, giving you the tools that you need to um, bring forth the life that you desire, the life that you deserve and be successful. Whatever that word successful means to you. And also, while you are at KeithAnthonyBlanchard.com, make sure, make sure, make sure you download the free Anchoring Heaven on Earth audio meditation. Uh, it's done by myself. Some really cool music. Some stereo imaging happening in the back. Uh, left to right painting in both ears. So I do suggest you wear headphones. Uh, some really cool suggestions. and All the suggestions are audible. So no worries there. Let me get my notes. Oh, uh, to call into the show, and I suggest you do that today, we're going to have Miss um, Laura Watson on the show today. And we're going to be talking everything angels. She's even open to the idea of doing angel readings. Yes, angel readings on the air. To call into the show, dial 888 919 2355. That's 888 919 2355. Call in now. Remember, if you're not at home by your computer and you want to hear your favorite show, you can go to the app store on your phone and download the Inception Radio Network app for free. Everything is at your fingertips. Chat room, listen, live links, news, podcast, much, much more. There are many ways to connect to Sooner of Light Radio and in the Inception Radio Network. Sooner of Light Radio and the Inception Radio Network would like to welcome Professor Eric R. Williams with his new show, Psychology's Outer Limits. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, June 7th, that was last night, I believe. So heads up for that new show. Also, Patricia Baker with her new show, Supernatural Girls with a Z. And that's going to be firing off on June 17th. Now it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio Business. Today on my show, my guest is Laura Watson, and we will be discussing everything angels. And as I said, angel readings live, so make sure you call in. Laura says the angels love to be in relationship with us. They see how scared and confused we can get, and they long to guide us toward ease and comfort. They enjoy a playful relationship with us. It's not necessary to talk in hushed, reverent tones around them. They like to help us find good parking spots. <laughs> yeah, right. And to make our lives easier, and it, even if it is that parking spot. They like to help us feel centered and confident. They like us to feel loved. Laura is an angel guide and energy healer. She is an angel therapy practitioner, UN method practitioner, and registered yoga teacher. Laura has been offering alternative healing since 2007. In her healing sessions, Laura weaves together UN Method energy healing with angel therapy techniques. The UN Method, which is a modernized form of Qigong, Chinese energetic medicine, strengthens the flow of qi in the spinal cord and throughout the body and the meridians by identifying areas of weakness and correcting them through uh, c correcting them to strength. It's a powerful and effective, yet gentle and hands-off form of energy healing. In addition, Laura is grateful to have attended Angel Camp with Doreen Virtue, wow, in 2008, and offers her clients angel healing and guidance as well as readings from archangels, ascended masters, spirit guides, animal spirit guides, and nature Spirit Guides, and the list of her credentials just keep going and going and on and on. Uh, I'm going to pause there and say, welcome to the Center of Light Radio, Laura Watson. Hi, Keith. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Is that weather whipping up pretty good in Chicago now? It was a little while ago. Um, the view from my hotel room is a brick wall. So I really can't see much, <laughs> but I don't, see, <laughs> I don't see any lightning now. So I guess that's a good sign. Again, it's, it's a great to talk to you uh, on the air again. Um, how do you want to dive into this thing, Laura? We got lots to talk about. Uh, angels, I, I'm fascinated. They're everywhere all the time and everyone has probably three, two and three, between two and four, maybe sometimes exceptional five guides but what about the angels do we have one who's assigned to us all our lives or do they bounce us around 
like children in an Indian family? <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. uh, how do they umbrella over us? How do they do that? When I took my training with Doreen Virtue, uh, we were taught that at the time of our birth, and actually before our birth, we have two guardian angels assigned to us, and they travel with us our entire life, and they're always with us. Um, my experience is that typically when I do um, angel readings, especially when I do group angel readings, which are really fun, I do angel parties sometimes, and so a group of people will come, and I just go around the room and I read, give you know angel readings for everyone. Typically, I do see two guardian angels, oftentimes one is a little more active or a little bit of a stronger personality, but typically I do see two. Those angels stay with us through our whole life. Um, As we live our life, though, um, special circumstances come up. Maybe we're recovering from an illness. Maybe we've just um, been through a divorce or just having a baby or, or death of a loved one, something like that we will have additional specialty angels, so to speak, who come in and help us specifically during those times. So we have, we have a lot of spiritual support from the angelic realm. In addition, the guardian, I'm sorry, the archangels are also available to us. I generally, generally work with um, what I call the big four uh, archangels. So Archangel Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Uriel, and they are all available to us as well. And they just kind of come in um, and out depending on what we're currently needing. And of course, they're available if we ask them to come, they will certainly come running to our side. Is there a place where the angelic realm crossfades into the realm of um, nature spirits, for example, like fairies and all those. Uh, isn't there a, a, a place where this actually comes together? Well, I think this is my experience when I work with my clients and work with myself. Um, we have all of this happening for us at all times. And some of us, depending on what Doreen calls, Doreen Virtue calls, um, our soul realm, like what realm we're from. Some of us have a stronger connection to the angelic realm or the nature realm um, than than others. And so sometimes because of who we are, where our soul originates from, we will be especially open and receptive to nature spirits, angels, um, star energy, and so on. but they do interact really well. My experience is that the vibration is slightly different between nature spirits like fairies and uh, gnomes and, and all of, you know, water nymphs. Um, the vibration is different from angels and archangels, ascended masters. I like to tell my clients that it's a little bit like playing um, a song on the piano You can play the same melody at the very high octave or the middle octave or a low octave. It's the same song, but it has a little different sound because of the vibration of the strings. So this is what it's like for me when I work with clients and I can tell, ah, this is more fairy energy and this is more angel energy. But sometimes, um, depending on how the client, what their soul, you know, like I said, their soul origin, uh, they the two will feel very similar and um, it takes a very fine ear to be able to discern the difference. And a lot of times it doesn't really matter too much because the guidance is very similar and very reliable. Does that answer your question? It does. (laughs) Yes. And the reason I asked was a couple of years ago, I was driving my car and (laughs) this presence of a fairy came over me. So I was overwhelmed. Her name was Fabriska and uh, we began to talk. And I asked her what it's like from where she's uh, speaking to me from. She said, it's so beautiful here. It's like a baby sister. It's pink, soft, gentle, new, fresh, warm, perfect. It is the place where all your woes, troubles, difficulties, concerns, and aches are wrapped in little pink bubbles, softening (laughs) all your your pain. It is your divine mother's bosom where you lay to rest and be nurtured, loved, and child. Mm. This place is what you know as Christ. It is the place of divine grace, the place where everything is all right. 
Don't ever kid yourself, she said. This place is more real than you imagine. As mm-hmm. I tell you about it, you begin to think of it. And that puts you there as you begin to create its very possibility. You have just been blessed with fairy dust. And then I asked, what is your reality like? What's its vibration? And she said, it's where fairyland begins to overlap the angelic realms. It's a very simple place here. All is in order in a nice, neat, tidy little way without stress or strain in a lullaby kind of way. Hmm. Wow. What a, what a <laughs> I love that. I do find that with fairies, you know, like um, sometimes the imagery that I get, there will be some nature spirit guides, you know, like, for example, the animal spirit guides, they walk with their feet on the ground, you know, uh, animals. Um, birds, of course, it's a different energy because they're, they can fly and they actually, they actually actually do both. They can walk on the ground and they can fly. Fairies, sort of um, the same. They kind of flit at the tops of, you know, like as a, maybe the flower garden, they would be kind of flitting across the top there. So it is true their energy, like um, their energy, their vibration would be a little higher than some of the more earthy nature spirits. So yeah, that really pretty the way she said that to you. I like that place. I'd like to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do go there. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, and remember, uh, listening to us, the phone number to dial if you want to call into the show. Let me grab that note real quick. If you want to get a reading from my phenomenal guest tonight. Oh, gosh. What is that phone number? I'll call it up here shortly while I ask Laura a question. Laura, when, when your angels guide you, I know they're not ones for offering ideas that are not of a high vibrational nature. Do you ever get glimpses, promptings from them? about the condition of the world. And when I mean condition, I don't mean, of course, they, they're seeing it in a total different way than we do down here in the human way. But, or, or do they prompt you to say, okay, Laura, some things are about to transpire. Do they ever give you a heads up on some of the not so good things? You mean like advanced notice that something's coming? Something's coming, but also that maybe in your work, you can press, to use the word, a little harder or deliver a message a little more um, powerfully about the importance of, of a certain condition. In other words, do they? F- I guess you would say give us a forewarning through you. Do you ever get those kinds of glimpses? I typically don't get uh, glimpses of large, you know, like um, hurricanes or earthquakes or any any big – um, earthy kind of events. Um, what does tend to happen is uh, the angels will sort of show me how some of our collective consciousness, which sometimes is um, a reflection of big earthy events, um, maybe, for example, fear, uh, division because of prejudice or um, hatred, jealousy, these kinds of things, um, they will show me how some of those Um, societal views or shared experiences start to kind of infect us and they do draw our attention to be aware of this this is going on there's a lot of dense energy because of you know it's usually not really a premonition or something that's going to happen I'm pausing a second because I'm thinking oh actually that has happened now and then where they might just not that they'll be specific like oh there's going to be an earthquake in this part of the world but more like you know the world needs a lot of love right now they need a lot of caring they need a lot of gentleness remind everyone how much they're loved remind everyone that the God is with them the angels are with them and that everything's going to be okay so sometimes you know they would speak in and those kinds of terms to help us uh, especially overcome our fears because our fears divide us. Um, they divide us from each other, from human to human, but they divide us in our relationship with the divine as well. And so as we heal and get perspective over our fear and start to be able to forgive ourselves and others, you know, that creates uh, a gentleness and, and a shared experience. So they do... They do definitely want want us to overcome that collective consciousness stuff that happens out there. 
Listening audience, that call-in number is 888-919-2355. That's 888-919-2355. Laura, I'm going to ask you a question you probably never had put to you in an interview. (laughs) (laughs) Are you an angel? Seriously, and I mean this literally. Are you an angel incarnated? And if so, or if you're not sure, do you have memories of coming to the earth particularly for a mission, and my next question would be, do angels incarnate? Because there's a, some confusion. I hear some people say, no, angels never incarnate. And the, on the flip of that, do earth beings, once they cross over, do they become angels and or guides? Oh, Keith, that's so many questions. I will do my best to try to answer okay, all the, of them. Let's go, with the fir- okay. let's go with the first one. The first one is, okay. do you have memory of knowing that you have incarnated on this earth from the angelic realm? I would say no, not specifically, though I do not feel that Earth is my true home. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's nobody's true home anyway, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, no, this isn't my real place, I guess. Um, it's really difficult sometimes, the density of Earth and human experience, that kind of thing. I definitely know more than remember, I guess. I definitely know of a different way, like a different way of being, something much more gentle, much more fluid. I've had, um, definitely had a memory of a time when bodies are not so solid. And as we, and we can actually sort of merge together in this sort of bodiless kind of way. And and as two would merge, you have a complete and total understanding of each other. And so there's so much uh, curiosity and, you know, we, we enjoy each other. And there's really no need for competition and rivalry and that feeling of separateness because there are no, there are no physical bodies as barriers. And that is a really nice way of being. Um, so, and I'm not sure if that's my origin, but I certainly have a memory of a time that things were like that. And um, that's really nice. So, I would say there are times that uh, the density of the human existence is foreign to me. And so, that requires me a um, little bit, you know, my grounding techniques, you know, feeling happy as a human and, um, you know, yoga definitely helps, meditation helps with that, but I spend some time with my angels to, you know, just to be here and be effective and um, be a good human while I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I can definitely say you would be an extension of angelic energy. I mean, look at (laughs) you. I mean, I mean this, honestly, looking at you, you have an angelic appeal. You, you, your talk, your voice, everything you're about. So you're definitely an expression of that energy for sure. What about the fact that I, I, and we hear many, many stories that angels will actually embody themselves for a moment to stop uh, something from happening, to save someone or to do that. And listen, I was years ago, I was in a bookstore, I was in the metaphysical section. And at this time, I was really interested in the Hindu uh, spirituality. And so I'm looking at the Bhagavad Gita and some guy next to me, I said, man, you have to really have an open mind to digest this stuff. And this lady sitting on the stool down the aisle, <laughs> she says, or an open heart. And I turned away for a second. When I looked back, she was gone. I mm-hmm. went up and down every possible aisle. This lady was not in the store to be found, was not in the store. I, I've seen videos uh, posted on social media where this car was about to get smashed and it disappears and there's a being standing there and, the, and all these things. But that being said, do angels actually incarnate in a human life for the duration of a human life? Any knowledge about that? Um, generally, Dorian Virtue, I believe, says no. Angels usually do not incarnate into a body, uh, very, with a few very rare exceptions. A couple of the archangels have taken human form for an entire lifetime. Um, generally, she would say no. That said, our souls can originate from different realms. So again, the angelic realm is one of those realms, and so... Uh, some people will carry angel-like attributes. Um, and thank you for that really like you. 
love well. <laughs> it's such a lovely compliment. I'm I'm blushing over here. Um, you deserve it. Accept well, it. You're Accept very your sweet. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed now, but uh, so people can and actually in Dorian Virtue's book, um, I think it's called Angel Realms. I'm the the actual title is escaping me at the moment, but you can actually take um, a little quiz and sort of figure out what your realm is. And when I was at my training with Dorian Virtue, and that was one of the most fun. Uh, exercises where we had to, I think there were maybe like 350 people in my training and yeah, it was big. And uh, we had to figure out and group together with our realms. And so there are some kind of guidelines and and they they evolve over time and some, um, oh, what do we call them? Like subgroups and some hybrids have emerged and you know, we ATPs, angel angel therapy practitioners, we love this conversation, um, doing uh, realm types and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> so some of the angelic realm folks have some physical attributes that they typically share, and as do the other realms as well. And then there are some, you know, uh, personality traits as well. So some people, regular humans. Um, their spiritual essence will carry angelic energy. And um, so that's, that's neat. So some people, and they do, there are people out there, they are just absolute angels. And um, we just thank God that they are living and breathing people because it gives us so much hope as humanity. Um, then, though, as you were talking about, angels are guardian angels typically do not interfere with our life unless we ask them specifically for help. So, um, because help. they help, right? Help. Right. <laughs> help. <laughs> they're, they're there <laughs> right at your beck and call. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's why they are so anxious to create a relationship with us because there, there is so much that they can do for us, but they won't and can't unless we ask first because of the law of free will. That said, if we are in danger of dying too early, our guardian angels can step in and take on a human body momentarily to save us. You know, those car crashes, you hear those stories all the time of somehow the baby who was locked in the car seat one second ago with a closed window somehow got unbuckled, flew through the window that was closed and landed safely in the grass. Wow, right? Um, and yeah, and a lot of one. times that yeah, and a lot of times at crash scenes, there's that you know mysterious person who saved the day, and then poof, gone. Nobody can find them. You know, a lot of people would say, and I believe that those those truly are guardian angels who step in, take a human body for a moment, help us, and then leave. And they have no ego. They have no need for thanks. They have no need for recognition. They simply are created to help us as humans. And then if I can just share one more little thing. Um, typically, I don't see angels with my physical eyes. Um, one time though, and I, I mean I have a couple of times, but generally that's not the way I work with them and it, it works well <laughs> the way I work with them, so no problem. But this was even before I was formally working with the angels. I was drifting off to sleep, I was on vacation I was drifting off to sleep and I opened my eyes and at the foot of my bed, there was a very tall male guardian angel. And I never saw the face, but I could see the body, very tall, wearing you know, a very simple looking linen garment. And I blinked my eyes and when I opened them again, he was gone. And I think I snuck up, like I think he wasn't expecting me to open my eyes. So I caught a glimpse of him, and it was really cool. Um, and I was did he smell course, like cookies? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wish he had. John Travolta smelled like cookies. Like, oh, that's right, and Michael. <laughs> that's Let fun. me ask you: um, When people pass to the other side, do they? Can they? Have they? Just from your knowledge and what you've learned in this magnificent field of work that you do. Can we become guides? Can we? And, and I know that our loved ones quote guide us, but can they be deemed guides, or can they move into angelic properties? Uh, generally, they do not. 
uh, become angels. And I know that's sad news for a lot of us because we think <laughs> <laughs> we think grandma's an angel. And, and she is. She's an angel to us, for sure, without a doubt. But no, the vibration is different. Um, my experience, and I do do some mediumship, though, I um, think that there are much more talented mediums out there. So I, I only do little bits and pieces of mediumship. But typically what I find is right after our loved ones pass away, they're usually greeted by other loved ones and teachers and guides and angels. And they spend a little bit of time like family or class reunion. Like, oh my goodness, look at you're here. I love you. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's so nice to see you again. And it's really a joyful thing. And they're a little bit busy for a little while. And for, so, so sometimes I have found that, they're, that um, they're not really available to chat much right at the beginning. They're very busy. Um, after a lot of those reintroductions have been made, um, they are available to us and they do offer lovely perspective. Um, that said, not everyone who lives a human life um, gives really great advice when they're living. And although everyone is um, evolving and in the time between our lifetimes, we have access to the highest form of wisdom, the greatest source of light. Uh, there's a lot of work that we do on uh, forgiveness and reconciliations and that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, most of us humans we have a little bit more work to do, and the angels just don't. They have no ego. So for a lot of us, overcoming the ego takes definitely more than one lifetime, usually many. And um, so that's what we do after we pass away is... Um, we move into, I find, move into a study space uh, where we evolve yet more. But they can be our guides, you know, they love us. And a lot of times they can help us sort through some family and ancestral patterns. We're at the bottom of the hour. Would you give your contact information out to the audience so they can find more about you and your awesome angelic work and all the other cool things that you do? Okay, cool. Um, well, I have a website, and I confess it's a little outdated, but you can still find me there. That is www.lightworkerlaura.com. I'm on Facebook as Laura Watson, and my email address is lightworkerlaura444 at wi.rr.com. Wonderful. I have, a, once again, that call, call in number. If you want to call into the show, get a reading from Laura, just call in and say hi. We'd love to hear from you. 888 919 I have a fantastic story I want to share. Um, a friend of mine some years ago was out listening to a, a concert with a friend of hers, and they were going to go over to the other friend's house just to hang out and listen to music or whatever, have some dinner or something. And as soon as she gets there, <clears throat> She says, oh, my God, I have to leave. And he, he says, what? He says, she says, I have to leave. And he says, why? She says, I have no idea, but I have to leave and I have to leave now. She grabs a purse, gets in a car and proceeds to go. She has no idea where she's going. Um, and she just finds her body. I wouldn't say being taken over, but she finds her body just weaving in and out of traffic. Um, <clears throat> and so she realizes that she's going to her house. So she thinks. So she gets in the right lane to make the turn to go towards her house, and somehow she passed up the turn, and she kept going. And so instead of turning around, she said, well, I'm just going to take the next turn and go a little longer, and I'll get there that way. Somehow she passed that one up and took the third right. When she took that right, she screams out loud, what is it I'm looking for? And, out, and this, she ended up in an area where normal people just do not hang out or do want to trek down this particular road. And there's a field on each side of the road, and the grass is pretty tall, let's say about mm, waist high. And as she says out loud, what is it I'm looking for? And I keep in mind, it's raining like cats and dogs, and it's somewhat cold. And out of nowhere, out of the, the field, comes this three-year-old child only in a diaper, and she slams on her brakes. She gets out of her car grabs this child and brings him into her car there is no one around she calls uh the police department the police shows up 
And come to find out, oh, the police officer says, give me the child. She says, uh-uh, you ain't getting this child <laughs> until the parents get here. Um, they called the parents. Come to find out what happened was a uh, family was uh, in, in town visiting from, I think, New Hampshire. And somehow the three-year-old child in the middle of the night let himself out and walked a mile and a half with no shoes through God knows what, through this field of grass, only for her to be perfectly placed when this child came out for her to stop and see it and collect this little kid. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. It gives me angel bumps, right? That's, wow. She was just in beautiful service to spirit and to that child and the family. Wow. Yeah, and she called me and says, Keith, I didn't know who to tell this to. You're probably the only one that would get it. Oh, my Uh, goodness. But even though I got it and understand such things, it's still like you. It took me back. I I bawled my eyes out. Wow. Such a beautiful story. Let me me ask you this. Um, Can you ask for future shows? Do you know the answer to... When we go to the other side, do we sleep? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, do we just hang out all the time with something to do forever? Uh, Do we sleep? I mean, do we take, so to speak, conscious pauses? Ooh, that's a good one, Keith. Conscious pauses. Oh, boy. Um, So this is not something I've ever asked the angels before, so I'm just going to ask them. And um, what they're saying to me is that it's it's all so perfectly balanced um we don't we wouldn't have the same needs for rest like we do in a human body because the human body with the vibration being so dense compared to you know the spirit a spirit self there are certain physical needs that we just have as a human um we have fewer of those needs but the experience is so much more balanced that things are effortless there that require a lot of effort and energy and, you know, deliberate choice and things here, there are things are, they're more fluid. And so the, it's a totally different type of experience that said, it's all, it's all just in perfect balance. So there are times that we do, we do work. Um, Typically with my, the work, that I do and how I interact with my clients, it has more to do with special spiritual evolution. Um, though the angels are telling me now that, that there is, there's other work to be done in addition to study and, um, kind of like advising sessions that we would have with our spiritual mentors there. There's work that we do. I should say contributions that we make for each other. And that's all done really joyfully. So in the work, quote unquote work, it actually recharges the batteries like a self-contained system. It's like the more you offer, you know, being in service, the more you're in service, the more fulfilled you are. And it does seem that there are some specialties that happen there, things that we are naturally good at and well suited to contribute with. And they all sort of work seamlessly and there's no competition like this is more important work than that and this you get paid more money than that it it's not like that <laughs> <laughs> would you can or or angels considered god god's thoughts um they res, they they act only by promptings of creator and if that would be the case they would be without free will would they be considered the thoughts of god that is such a pretty thing to say. Um, that sounds right. Um, typically, the way I would say it would be it's a, I like it as a two-way communication. So the thoughts of God, but also it's like a conversation with God. They are like the translator so that um, things are easier because we oftentimes have blocks around talking to God. Of course, we all can, and God loves that. Um, But a lot of us, because of the way we were raised or the collective consciousness and conventional religious views, it's too intimidating to talk Mm. to God. But the angels were designed to be completely approachable. They're beautiful, they're gentle, they're non-threatening, and their spiritual power is sort of... um, 
toned down a bit. So like um, how soft lighting in a room makes us feel comfortable and safe and cozy as opposed to bright glaring light can sometimes be, you know, like you, it's hard to relax in that setting. So the angels um, are kind of, they're just, uh, well, they're very powerful. I wouldn't say they're just as powerful as God, but they, they hold um, an enormous amount of spiritual power, but they usually tone it down for us um, so that it's, so it's easy and comfortable. So it's not that we would never look at angels as um, really as separate from God. It's um, that they are designed to be, to be the helper of communication. They're, the word angel translates to messenger of God. So, but it's back and forth. So mm. when I have a spiritual question, I, I mean, I talk to my angels all day. Angels, what should I do about this thing? And they answer me immediately. I'm like, oh, okay, great, thanks. Um, this morning, for example, small example, but like you were kind of laughing about the parking, the parking spot thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the angels love to do that stuff for us because... First of all, it's a it's an easy way to make a connection with us and to to gain a little bit of experience and trust with them. But so, for example, this morning I was getting ready to go to my yoga training, and we always get a book that we would write notes in, and so I, I knew that we always get one. But today, and usually there's no need for additional paper because I would want to write all my notes in the book that we receive anyway from our teacher. Well, today the angels just said, you know, bring your notebook and pen with you. Okay. So I threw it in the bag. Well, our book wasn't ready. It'll be ready tomorrow. So yay for the angels telling me to bring my notebook. So it's little (laughs) stuff. (laughs) You know, it's little stuff. It's not all like totally profound, big, spiritual, wow. You know, a lot of times it's just making our life a little better day by day. And then, you know, if we have a good relationship with the little stuff, we feel, because, you know, we humans, we're so fearful. We're so skeptical. And so um, now I'm like, wow, they were right about the notebook. Maybe I'll ask about, hey, what should I do about forgiving my sister? Oh, angels, that's a good idea. I'll do that. So, you know, they, they like to interact with us in all ways, little insignificant ways, big life-changing ways. And so we're, all we really need to do is show the intention of making contact, you know, just while you're putting your makeup on or making some food, just, hey, you know, who's hanging around? Can you, you know, da-da-da-da-da, and begin this dialogue. And of course, and then thoughts probably show up in your mind that never would have if you not never, you know, uh, stated the intention for such contact. Um, because we had no phone calls, <laughs> Oh. Um, it leaves a window open for me. Would you give me uh, a small angel reading would be just like really, really awesome. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. Do you have a specific question or do you want a general reading? Let, they know what they're doing. Let's see what they have to say. Okay. Well, um, I mean, I know that you've got a connection with um, Indian teachers, gurus, and um, the angels are... Confer- not that you need confirmation on that, of course, but um, they're just showing like um, one of the Indian goddesses, I, I think it's Lakshmi. Uh, anyway, she's very beautiful. And it, I'm trying to discern, so hang tight for a second, if it's Lakshmi or if it is uh, Kali. Um, it appears to be Lakshmi with um the power of Kali. So it could be that they're working together to support you. So not sure how well you know these, these are more of the goddesses, but um, so Lakshmi has to do with endings and beginnings. And obviously, you know, with the growth of your work out in the world and some new things that are coming for you, she is definitely present in helping you transition from the old into the new. And it's really a supercharged beginning. Like, totally amped up um, where it's like I mean I'm not an electrical and electronic type person but you know like the outlet that you plug um, you know you plug a lamp into totally different from the one that you plug the refrigerator into and that's the transition they're saying it's like uh, the bandwidth that you're working with that you're going to be stepping into it's much more powerful and um Kali is there to help with the integration of the upgrade, I guess, like the the expansion. Um, and she's very powerful. Oh, and in fact, sh- her for me when I work with her, her power 
or her intensity and her ability is very similar to Pele, who is the um, the goddess of Hawaii with the the fiery creation energy of the volcanoes. In that's addition, a, that's a major connection for me, Hawaii, by the way, and oh, good. Uh, being validated through you now. Um, lots of things in my life, or m- doors completely shutting, and amazing opportunities just being blasted open. So, I really awesome. appreciate that. Yes. Good. Well, they. In addition to that, then though, is that Lakshmi is also present in Lakshmi. Um, ah, you know what? I'm sorry. I think it's Saraswati. I think I'm getting a little confused. Hang tight. Um, they're both beautiful. Um, I think it's Sarasvati, though, the arts. She's very much helping you with your art and your craft. So let me just make sure that I've got the right name for you because I want to make make sure it's a really good reading. I'm looking through my... Well, okay. So you got all three, and that's what they're saying. So Lakshmi is saying bright future, a very bright future. She's just covered in gold. Um, but then there's also Saraswati. So you have a lot of feminine Indian energy with you. Saraswati is the arts. So as you express yourself artfully in all aspects, obviously as a musician, you're an artist, um, you know, your spiritual work, it is an art form and the way you share it. Uh, so all three of these goddesses um, are working with you. And so at this point, the angels are helping you to integrate feminine principles. Um, and I know that's a concept that's very comfortable and familiar to you, that, that um, divine feminine force that runs through each of us and through the universe and through uh, the divine source. You are being assisted by three really powerful feminine uh, goddesses, in addition to that, they all, you know, they typically will show themselves as uh, young ish women, maybe middle age max. But the truth of the matter is, as you are integrating this feminine energy, the three faces of the goddess, of course, are maiden, mother, and crone. And yes. so, um, you know, all of those faces of the goddess, in addition to the personalities of these three Hindu goddesses, are all working with you. And the angels are, um, they are definitely helping to pave the way. And the thing about the goddesses versus the angels, the energy is similar, um, but the goddesses are a little bit more earthy because they they would have lived um many of the ascended masters and goddesses w- would have been seen as a little more like feet touching the earth type what's nice about that for you is um with you being a man having that grounded feminine presence um integrates a little bit easier for you certainly you're a very spiritual person and very in tune with higher vibrations but having the women's feet on the ground that seems to be a significant part of what works well for you well that's lovely i've always said a man could never have too many young goddesses in his life (laughs) uh laura we're getting close to the top of you we have about 15 minutes and this show would not be complete uh, without Mm -hmm. sharing with the listening audience how they can begin to make contact we talked about you know just talking out loud which can initiate contact but someone really wants to delve into this work work someone really wants to delve into this play um how does one go about that so there's a couple ways that work really well um like you said first thing is um asking just asking for a relationship with the angels now when i did that the very first time i was blessed with an incredible clairvoyant experience (laughs) where um i saw a glimpse of heaven that blew my mind um evidently most people don't have that (laughs) um i was uh one of the very lucky few from what i understand from people and even my ATP colleagues, what typically is a good way to do it is um, show an interest in the angels. You don't have to go buy a bunch of stuff. Just show an interest, like a recognition that that you're that the angel is there and that you're wanting to create a relationship. And then they will start talking back. 
a lot of times you'll start to see coins and feathers. You might like look up into the sky, you might see an angel cloud. You might just start to notice that pictures of angels, angel figurines are, are starting to show up everywhere. Angels like to use the number four. 44 and 444 as a symbol that they're nearby. So maybe you're driving in traffic and you're feeling tense and then you say, oh, angels, ah, oh, can you help calm me down? Can you help traffic clear up? All of a sudden you notice the car in front of you has the 444. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's really fun. That's really a sign that they're there. You might start to hear songs being played on the radio, something about angels or she talks to be. angels <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lot you know there's a lot of songs on the radio that talk about angels it's amazing um sarah or McLaughlin, sarah mclaughlin's song uh in the arms of the angel it is so powerful yeah that's a beautiful song um but they also sometimes you know if you ask a question hey i'd really like some guidance about this challenge that i'm going through um then you hear a song on the radio it might not be about angels, but it might be the very answer. It kind of inspires you to take action. Um, they work with stuff like that. Like maybe you're having lunch and you overhear a conversation at the table beside you and they're, you just suddenly get exactly what you need. The angels are going to work in many ways. It's not all going to be heavens opening up and you know getting this amazing vision. Uh, a lot of times it's just a little more subtle than that, a little bit more earthy, but delight in that anyway. I always um, feel a lot of gratitude when my angels show up and they help me. I just, I love them and I'm so grateful for them. Gratitude is a really high vibration and it just keeps us receptive to messages from the divine. So cultivating gratitude's a, a good way to go anyway. Um and then yeah, it just raises kinda... the vibration so we can actually participate and connect with them in a conscious way. So are you saying it's yeah. really that simple that there's not this long protocol that a person has to follow? It's just intending, speaking out loud, speaking from your heart inside or however it may be. It's just the want or the desire to say, you know, chime in. Let me know you're there. I know you're there, but I want to know that this is something from you that's a juicy tidbit that I can implement in my life and create that which brings me joy. Oh, yeah. It, it is. It is that simple. It really is. And the one thing to think about, because I know a lot of people, a lot of um, my clients and students um, are worried that, well, what if I make a mistake? What if, <laughs> what if I think it's, you know, what if I think the message is from an angel, but it's really not? Um, some of us get really s worried of, you know, about negative energies, that kind of thing. And I always remind people, angels are always loving. They're always, always loving. They will always be gentle they will always love you if they ever, you know, if you ever feeling like there's a message of, oh, you should really, you know, take revenge on someone. Well, an angel would never say that. So the angels are consistently loving. They're very patient. For example, if they're advising you to make a good health change, like maybe you've been smoking and they want to tell you, you know, probably should stop smoking. They're not going to criticize you harshly for smoking. They're not going to make you feel bad. They'll probably say something like, Dear one, we love you and we know that you would enjoy a healthier body and a healthier experience with your body if you gave up smoking. So let us help you give up smoking. They would never uh, judge or criticize. So that's something to think in or keep in mind too. And you know, honestly, sometimes we are so harsh with our own criticism of ourselves that sometimes we are not equipped to hear such loving and gentle messages from our angels. So we have to kind of be open to the idea that someone would love us and we have to do nothing in return. We can just accept their love. So sometimes we just have to be open to the idea that such love exists. Knowing what I know, Having had the experiences I've had, aliens aboard their craft, hanging out with an alien-human hybrid for four years, who with, in my, every fiber of my being, no doubt, is who he says he is. Uh, having experiences with divine avatars, getting messages in my sleep, come to India, two weeks later I get a phone call from someone I never met, giving me a first-class round-trip ticket to India to go see the divine man that invited me to his ashram in a dream. These kinds of things I am blessed to say I've had. That being said, I still find myself 
in situations of doubt. It's, it seems that, wow, Keith, you've really had all these experience. How can doubt ever be present? It's part of the human process. And, you know, I still have phantom. Well, let me take, make that not so affirming. I've had <laughs> uh, recently um, doubt. You know, and 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 of course, uh, it what follows that doubt is, come on now, Keith, you've had the opportunity to be blown wide open, seeing the birth of creation while I was in India by Sathya Sai Baba touching me on my hand, giving him a pl- prayer b- uh, bead to bless a japa mala, but yet these um, energies of doubt still want to creep in, and and so. When we connect to higher energies, higher consciousness, the divine language, how does one begin the process of removing that doubt that seems to want to always crop up when we truly, truly want to believe that our intentions to make that connection um, is happening? Well, I'll share with you what what has worked for me, especially uh, early on my path, because I was raised Christian. Protestant and pretty strict form of Lutheran, and um, it you know some of this stuff is just really not accepted from the faith tradition I grew up in, and so as things were starting to happen to me, um, got into the energy healing, which is Taoist in philosophy and kind of pulling in. Uh, aspects of Eastern thought like past lives and this idea that you can heal yourself without medicine, some of this crazy stuff. Um, And then working with the angels, I thought, oh my gosh, um, how can I keep my grounding so I don't kind of lose myself? Um, So I just kind of went back to my roots and I looked at uh, the fruits of the Spirit, which shows up, um, I think it's in Galatians in the New Testament. At any rate, it talks about when you are, you know, I'm going to use New Agey wording because I don't remember the, the text verbatim, but when you are in communion with God, here's all the good stuff that starts to happen to you. And so I would say, so I would look back at that and then say, okay, if I pursue this energy healing, if I pursue working with the angels, is my, is the fruit of my spirit, is like the fruit coming off my tree, is it better or is it worse? Am I more patient? Am I more loving? Am I more generous, tolerant, or am I less so? I found consistently that I was more so. So I think I was on the right track. So for me, it was helpful to actually go back to my roots. And I know for some people that would be hurtful because they've been hurt by conventional religion or whatever. But for me, that was a touchstone. So whenever I start to doubt, I would go back to the very basic question. So these things that are happening to me, is it making me more able to be in service to people or is it making me less able? Or, you know, whatever my value is. Am I, am I more patient? Am I a better listener? Am I more forgiving? Mm. That kind of stuff. That's what works for me. Lovely. Laura, we are coming to the top of the hour, which brings us to the closing of the show. Would you please give out your contact information once more? Sure. So my website is www.lightworkerlaura.com. I'm on Facebook. You can find me at Laura Watson. And right now my picture has me wearing a white top. And um, my email address is lightworkerlaura444 at wi.rr.com. Final thought? Oh, gosh, just just a reminder that you are so loved and you are not alone. No matter how dark and scary and overwhelming life can be sometimes, you are never alone. Let the angels help you. So thank you so much, Keith. It's always so much fun to be with you. Ah, it's a pleasure. My pleasure. Absolutely. Again, Laura, thank you greatly. You're always welcome back to Center of Light Radio. Keep us posted about what you're doing. Thank you. Keith Anthony Blanchard here, Center of Light Radio, every Monday. 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Make sure you check out centeroflightradio.com. Also, keep the anthonyblanchard.com to find all that cool stuff that I do. Um, just remember, also, by, uh, next week, my guest is going to be Anya Traha, and we're going to be talking some, oh gosh, I forgot the word. It's going to be a great show. You can bet my promise to you is always to have a phenomenal, phenomenal guest on this show. 
Also remember in the very near future, um, Swamji Viswayogi, self-realized man, a god man, a man who can tap into himself in this very moment and know exactly what it is I'm saying to you. I've had the pleasure of being um, in his space, personal space, him telling me about my life, about my past, pinpoint accurate, <laughs> trust me, but also um, the possibility of Nucleus 8, alien human hybrid that I was connected to for four years. Uh, he said he would consider coming on the Center of Light radio. Again, thank you for your attendance here. Remember, you're laying in your bed at night and you have nothing to do. You might as well do something in that life and take those magical breaths. In those breaths, the breath of God, if you will, God breathe life into man. As you breathe, who you really are, who you truly are, the authentic you, lies just behind that breath. And always remember to ease into bliss. Center of Light Radio, my name is Keith Anthony Blanchard. Spread the light and power up. Good evening.